All right, hello again, everybody. Uh, another build done. This is actually a photo editing build. Some of the parts are um, a little bit weird if you think about it in a sense of a gaming build. Uh, this is not really what you do if you're doing a gaming build. You can kind of see that as I go through. So uh, let me go out and talk about the build and uh, then I'll get into the price of the build. And following that, we'll get into the actual building content. So this build is, again, is for a photo editor, not a video editor. Um, and so because of that, we were able to go a little bit cheaper on the graphics card. If you're video editing, you're most likely going to be going with a 2060 Super, at least. That's a very good spot to be at. Um, but if you're a photo editor, you basically just want to make sure you have a solid card that can get 4K output most of the time. Um, that's If that's the extent of your photo editing. Uh, because the CPU is actually going to be doing a lot of the rendering uh, for most software. So because of that, we went with obviously the highest end CPU chip that we can go, the Ryzen 9 3900X, 12 core, 24 thread CPU. Um, I ran some Cine benchmarks on it. It's, it's a fantastic chip. And with the graphics card, we went with the simple RX 580. Uh, we're, we wanted to make sure we put as much money that we had in the budget towards the CPU. And then we wanted to make sure we got a decent, for sure a decent graphics card, but not one that broke the bank. So that's how we went with that decision. Most editing builds do use the NVIDIA cards, um, but we were actually okay to go with this with this, uh, with the AMD version. The Sapphire Pulse is a great brand, great thermals. And not to mention this case, if you can't tell, there's a tons of Noctua fans in there. This case is going to be inside of a cabinet. So I want to make sure that everything that we put into this is going to be good thermals because it's going to be kind of uh, stuck away into a storage area while, the, while it's being used. The motherboard, again, is my favorite B550M motherboard. If you're a creator and you're going to be doing a lot of creation, creating, obviously, yeah, go with a higher-end motherboard uh, that can handle a little bit higher thermals, especially if you're video editing. But for this build, again, we put our money towards the computer chip first and uh, towards everything else second. So that's kind of how we did this build. Uh, the fan here is the Noctua NF-A14. That's these 140-millimeter fans you see over here on the inside, on the right side. And then, obviously, I have one here at the, on the stock. And then I have these two can fans that came with the case. Uh, these fans are silent and fantastic. I don't really know if I need to say much more about Noctua because they speak for themselves. The uh, M.2 we went with was the one terabyte M.2 from XPG. It's a good generation three M.2, very fast. Uh, and I, I recommend anybody that's putting a new computer together to definitely use an M.2 drive. Uh, in addition, you see this uh, sound blaster up here they wanted an uh, audio card, uh, so we made sure we installed that. That's actually this right here, down here at the bottom, uh, and the build video goes into it. So that's the build. I know that there's going to be some people that will say, hey, you you know, you know, should have chosen an NVIDIA graphics card over an AMD. I get that. There's uh, definitely pros and cons to both. Uh, but again, this is a sole photo editing build. Obviously, this graphics card can handle video editing, but uh, because it's only a sole photo editing build, we made sure we put all the money we could towards what's going to be um, helping a photo edit kind of a build and then obviously left the rest to whatever we could kind of muster up that would be a good part of the build so please leave uh, any comments in the in the in the comment section uh, but we're going to go into the build video in a moment let me go into the pricing first so i'm a pretty big stickler when people talk about pcs being one thousand dollars seven hundred dollars whatever they don't often tell you the full story such as tax and things like that so this indeed is a 1280 to 1300 dollar build because all the parts we use cost about that much before tax where i am i buy my tax is about 8.2 percent on my sales uh i'm in texas and that's just what i found i get charged and then if somebody asks me to do the build for them i usually charge it charge them about a hundred dollars so overall the person that bought this build paid me about fifteen hundred dollars because i bought the parts and they paid me back for the parts and then paid me for the build itself so this is the overall cost and you see all the parts in there i wanted to make sure i showed this so you get the idea this is a 1280 build if you're going by the parts cost only the nr400 that case i'll tell you mm, the nr400 for the uh, micro atx boards and the nr600 for the atx boards fantastic boards all right enough of that let's get to the build and uh, again questions in the comments thanks so as I usually do, we're going to start this build with the motherboard. And to describe the motherboard, essentially what we have is we have your computer chip that's going right here in the very middle. And I basically lifted up this arm up and I aligned it with, there's a little yellow, uh, yellow triangle on the bottom left hand side of the Ryzen chip. 
that aligns with the another triangle that's on the motherboard to just tell you how to sync it in. There's only one way it'll fit, and you just drop it in and it syncs right in. And I'm gonna actually go ahead and close this arm to lock that chip in there, and we're good to go. All I have to do now for that Ryzen chip is to put on the cooler. Now this cooler is interesting. Um, you can see that a lot of AM4 motherboards come with this bracket. This only applies if you're using an applicable cooler that can use this bracket. Otherwise, you actually take this out and put a different cooler on top. But these coolers have these little clips on here that actually latch onto that. And this is an RGB fan. You can see how big it is. This is why I really trust the Ryzen 9 fans, especially if you're not going to be doing a lot of overclocking. This is a very good fan to use to keep your, your uh, computer cool. If you are doing overclocking or if you're doing video editing, maybe upgrade to a fan that might be $40. I mean, up to Noctua's D15, which is about 90. But I think this will get you through. Just watch the temperatures and you'll, you know, you'll know for sure. What I've done here is I've attached a USB RGB connector that came with the fan. And this goes into the fan itself to make to cause it to turn on as far as RGB goes. And I'm happy to install the software from MSI that'll let you run that as well uh, and control that. Other things on the motherboard, obviously we have our RAM connected and it tells you on the motherboard right here, let's see here, right there, how to install it. And it's just basically saying, hey, make sure you put in every other slot because uh, two of these are dedicated to one memory channel on the CPU, two of these are dedicated to the other and they wanna make sure that this is the best configuration to make sure your computer is getting the fastest RAM available. This is 32 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes each, so you still have two slots to put uh, another 32 in there if you want. So you can add up to 64 gigabytes of RAM on this thing. It's really gonna be a really good time. Um, we have 3,600 megahertz of speed on these things as well, which will make sure we get going. Other parts of the motherboard that I've completed is actually underneath this heat sink right here. That's actually where I've installed your M.2 drive, which I can show you right here. It looks like this, all right? So we've installed, let me turn this way. We've installed this onto your motherboard. We basically just plugged it in like that, right into that motherboard and put the heat sink from the motherboard on top of it. So that is now in there. That's actually your main drive. You have uh, one terabyte of M.2 storage space, so very, very fast storage space on that that you can, um, that you can work with. Other than that, let me explain the motherboard real quick. You have your heat sink for your VRM, your voltage control. That's gonna make sure that your computer chip isn't getting over, over voltage, I guess you could say, or getting too hot. Down here you have the heat sink for the chip itself, the B550 chip that's kind of telling the motherboard what to do. Over here are all your SATA ports to plug in your uh, solid state drives if you're, or your hard drives that are SATA. Some front pin connectors we'll go over in a moment. But uh, on the left side here is your I.O. shield, your input outputs that we're going to correspond with the case in, in a moment. But now all I need to do is put the, um, put the fan on top of this chip, get that secured, and then we'll move on to the case. All right, now we're on to the case, and this is going to be really easy. Uh, down here you can see uh, where to put the micro ATX uh, standoffs, which is what your board is. It's a micro ATX board. So I basically have all these uh, standoffs at the correct location that it's telling me to put for the standoffs of the micro ATX board. All these little screw heads are on top, so I'll be screwing into there. On the left side here, I have your I.O. shield or your input-output shield installed as well. I just plop that in there so that when you do your, um, you know, you're using your USB, your LAN, etc., it's all good to go. So I'm basically going to pick up this motherboard, plop it on in, and screw it down. Everything is looking good, and uh, we'll go from there. At this point, I have my motherboard now installed, and they're all tied down with these screws here. Now, what I've also done is I've connected the front panel headers. And so what I'm going to show you is on the top here, we have obviously your power, your reset, your two USB, and your audio jack. And these actually all lead down from here into the case. And let me just show you where I plugged them all in. So you obviously have uh, your USB connector that plugs in right here. You have two USBs that are controlled actually right there by that. You have here your uh, basically front panel uh, power switch turned on and off, as well as its LED and reset, it's pretty easy to put in. You just kind of follow the instructions as you see right here. Uh, here is actually not anything related to the front panel. I've, I've just rerouted the wire that controls your RGB fan. And then uh, over here is your H, your audio jack for the front. It's just in the bottom left-hand corner in this case. Your motherboard will let you know where that goes if you have a different type of motherboard. So all the front panel connectors are now in, which means I'm gonna finish putting in the fans and I'll talk about the fan configuration. All right, let me show you how I routed out the wires. This fan is connected to this fan header right up here. Uh, this fan here is a actually a, um, a splitter. And you can see that the exhaust fan up here is actually connected to that splitter. And this fan here, the cord is going behind it and getting to that splitter as well. 
And then here I have another splitter going to the back so that the two side fans on the front are connected to that splitter. So that's over here, splitter and splitter. They're all connected. So all these fans should be connected. When I turn it on, I'll know for sure. But we are looking good. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to the graphics card and then to the sound card. It's now time for the graphics card. And this is certainly one of my favorite graphics cards, the Sapphire RX 580 Pulse. I love the top plate. It's very sleek. I love the Sapphire brand. It's good for its thermals. It's a very powerful card. Um, gaming and I run great on this. And I know it's going to give you 4K resolution, great graphics for uh, photo editing. It is a very good card at only $220. If you were doing video editing, of course, I'd recommend probably an RTX NVIDIA card like the 2060 Super. That's been a very popular card for editing uh, video. But for photo editing, if uh, if that's all you're doing, this is a fantastic card for the job. Um, and I'm going to plug that in right in here. It's just going to basically pop open this little PCIe Express slot right here. And on the left side over here, you can see that I have an opening for the actual display ports over here on the side and the HDMI ports. So I'm going to just plug that in right there. It's going to snap in. It's going to sit right there. And I'm going to plug it in with the PCIe power cable. And the graphics card's installed. And that's all it is. So I have completed basically the whole build except for the sound card, which we're going to install, which not everybody installs because you do have a sound out port here, a line in, line out, and a mic. And I'm not going to do tons of cable management, mainly because I know that you're going to be installing hard drives down the road, which again can go here at the bottom. Here's the SSD slots here, and there's two more SSD slots right here below the hard drive if you can fit it after I put the sound card in. And inside the motherboard box, you're going to see the uh, SATA cables right here to plug them in, as well as these hard drive, uh, I don't know, these lock-in hard drive things for the cage as well you can use. So I'm going to leave all that in there. But now let's go ahead and get the sound card installed. Uh, let's get this guy installed so that that, and I'll install the drivers after I get it running. Okay, so for the sound card, it's just going to go into a PCI Express times one slot. That's how simple it is. And so I've opened up the side here, and I'm going to put it into this one. You have two. I probably could fit it in the one right beneath the fan of the graphics card. I just don't want to choke it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the bottom one. And uh, we should be quite ready to go. Let me just get that in there. And there we have it. Down here at the bottom are your sound ports. And, of course, if, I just, if you need to move this up, just take out this slot here. And this should fit perfectly right underneath the uh, Sapphire fans. Again, I just didn't want to choke the fans out in case you needed to have that airspace for airflow. So there that is. Now, hopefully you can still fit a um, SSD here and here. I mean, I know you can fit one here. You just got to move the power out of the way. Um, but again, there's plenty of slots to tie everything down. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing booted up and see how it runs. Okay, moment of truth. I have everything plugged in. This is turned on now. That's plugged into the power, HDMI is plugged into the monitor, monitor is turned on. I have my keyboard plugged in, I have my mouse plugged in. Let's go ahead and see if this boot posts. All right, so everything is spinning. So we have the RGB fan spinning for the computer. That's nice. I mean, I'm going to download a software so you can turn that off if you don't like it. Exhaust fan, that's working. These fans up here are working, that's what I wanted. Again, this is a cooling fan bringing air in. This one's exhaust. That's how I've set it up. And these two, of course, are bringing cooled air in as well. Oh, man, these fans are awesome. Oh, my gosh. All right, so there we have it. Now we got to just wait to see if this posts. I'm going to give it a second here, but this screen should pop up with the information. It does take in a second or two. And here we have it, Ryzen 9 3900X 12-core processor. We have our RAM size at 32 megabytes. Sorry, 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it's running slow, which is fine. We're going to fix that. It's, you actually got uh, 3,600 megahertz of speed. So I'm going to press F1 to run setup, and we're going to get into the BIOS. Okay, so in the BIOS, I can see already that you have uh, the June 4th, 2020 version of the software of the BIOS. I'm going to fix that later. I have a USB with all the drivers and stuff that I'll download. Um, but yeah, everything looks good. We're going to obviously fix your DDR speed later once we get all the BIOS updated and all the drivers installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my installation media with Windows on it right onto the, uh, just into a USB port here. Uh, let's make sure I put it in correctly. There we go. And I'm going to restart the computer. So I'm going to X out of this and we're going to get in Windows installed. What you can see is that it booted automatically to that drive. And I'm, now it's kind of boring. I'm going to just say, yes, we're going to install Windows now. And uh, once inst the only thing I want to show you is that on a clean, a clean install of Windows like this, where you have a clean drive. Right now we don't have a product key. You can put yours in later. When you have a clean drive, it's very easy, Windows 10 Home, to um, uh, install it on a clean drive. You just go to Custom Install, and it installs it onto the drive 
that you have. So here I am, a custom install because uh, I want I, I'm, it's a brand new install, and it shows the drive right there, the one terabyte um, solid state drive that you have in the M.2 slot, and that's the one we're going to use to install Windows. And now it's just going to run its thing. So I'm going to kind of like stop this here. Obviously, if you need to update drivers, you can do that from the motherboard website. If you need to update the um, the drivers for the graphics card, I'm going to install AMD Radeon software that updates those drivers automatically for you. And also, um, I'm going to download the um, MSI Dragon Center app so that you can control the RGB. And I believe also you can actually control your drivers from the um, MSI Dragon Center app as well if you want to install those. So I'm going to get all that installed, and I'll show you that in a quick video later, but that's the boring part. But this build is basically done. I'm going to run some benchmarks, but this is looking very, really, really good. All right, so I have Windows updates running back here. Tons of Windows updates going. I just I finally connected to, to my LAN. I'm going to check to make sure the Wi-Fi works later as well. But Windows updates are running. I just want to make sure you know uh, when you go to the website for MSI, you just look up the Pro VDH Wi-Fi B550 and motherboard, and it's here that you can go to the support page and get everything you need. So I've already done all the downloads for this. I'm going to do this on my own, but I went to BIOS, and I got the most recent BIOS. I'm going to update that later. I went to drivers, and I can manually install all these drivers if I want to. Obviously, you're going to need RAID, which is right here, because you're doing um, a RAID connection with your um, SATA ports. Uh, but I'm also going to get your chipset drivers, all those installed. And uh, lastly, Utility uh, has this thing called Dragon Center. Windows 10 Let's see, here it is, MSI Dragon Center. And we're going to download this because this is going to control your RGB and also help you do automatic updates for drivers for the motherboard. So we're going to save that and get that installed as well. And I'm going to show you real quick how to control the RGB on the fan. Okay, there's two things I want to show you. First off is the AMD Radeon software that I've downloaded. This is going to keep your drivers up to date. This is the AMD Radeon software. You can see that I last checked all the drivers are up to date. And it does recognize uh, your card. Right down here, it's telling you the card you're using as well as the CPU you're using. So uh, it's very convenient to use. And obviously, you can come in here, and I'm not going to go into it. You can you know, use this as you need. You can come in here and edit a lot of things of how your graphic, graphics card performs uh, on your different applications. Um, so just keep that in mind as you uh, video edit or obviously what you're doing, photo edit. So the next thing I want to show you is this, what we call a Dragon Center. It's this icon right here. This is for your motherboard. And uh, real quick, I'll show you how to adjust the RGB. You can see I've changed it to red. You just go to Mystic Light. And in here, it's going to ask you, uh, you only have motherboard, you, sorry, you only have uh, fan RGB for your motherboard here, which is why I have that selected. I mean, I could link fans and motherboard. Uh, anyway, right now, it's, I'm going to set it to rainbow, and I'll say apply. And you should see that that fan is going to start with the rainbow colors like it was before. It's not kind of doing its own thing. So anyway, come on in here and um, just choose whatever RGB you want that's in here. Um, now, the next thing is how to update your drivers through here. Let me show you that. So if I come over here to my device, let me get out of this registration thing. I don't think I need a, a support, I mean. Support, uh, I can do a live update. I will scan. And it's going to scan for my recent, most recent drivers. And this is where I can actually come in and make sure all the drivers are up to date. So I just scanned. I'm going to go ahead and uh, install the network drivers, Bluetooth drivers, chipset drivers. Uh, yes, Intel. Yes. Uh, Google Drive and Norton Security. Not going to install those. Utilities. Don't need any of these. Okay. Looking good. So let me go ahead and get these things installed real quick. And you can see I'm just letting them run. Just let them go. Okay, so everything looks good. Now, as far as your sound card goes, I want to make sure that that's good to go. I've been using it. It's a great sound. It's very loud. It's very crisp. I actually love them in my Turtle Beach headphones I have. Um, I went to the website, the Sound Blaster Auto GFX. I'm going to go down to their download section and basically make sure you have the software for this as well. I saw it on here somewhere. Oh, yeah, Sound Blaster Auto GFX. I'm going to go to their downloads. And... Here it is, downloads, download software. All right, so let's just see what the software is. That way you can have the software for your sound card that I believe will run your drivers for you. So that would be good. Okay, and let me show you one more thing I noticed down here. The Sound Blaster control panel, that's for your sound card. Uh, if you tap that, you have actually a control panel for that as well. Just so you know, I want to make sure you saw that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the BIOS real quick. My USB over there is still in for it. And uh, once it restarts, I'm going to just keep pressing this delete key, and it's going to take me right into the BIOS, and I'm going to run the new BIOS on my 
flash drive. In here, I'm gonna to go to the M flash option. It's gonna open up my BIOS menu. I'm gonna say yes into flash mode. And in flash mode, um, it's gonna tell you at the bottom your current BIOS, and obviously my BIOS is out of date. Uh, June 4th is the, uh, of 2020 is when the BIOS was. So I'm gonna to go to where I know I saved my BIOS on my flash drive, which is what it's reading. And uh, here's the directory. And when I select it, it's gonna automatically notice that that BIOS is 2.41. And this is what I downloaded and extracted from the MSI B450 motherboard website. So I'm gonna simply say enter, and it's gonna say, you sure you wanna update? And the answer is yes, I wanna update. So now I'm gonna just step away and let, it, let this run its thing. Okay, so we're back in the BIOS, and you can see it's updated now, 9.29, 2020, um, at 2.41. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to memory real quick. And under memory, I'm gonna make sure that this 3600 megahertz is recognized. So XMP profile one, I'm gonna select XMP profile one, and I'm gonna get out of here. And that's all I'm gonna do. Our memory is now good to go. And let's go ahead and see if we can play some games. All right, so let's go. We are now running the Ryzen 9 3900X, uh, Core 12s and 24 threads, oops, sorry. 24 threads and our memory is at 3600 megahertz which is what it should be at and it's 32 gigs so it looks like we're good to go that's the computer i'm going to go ahead and uh copy some uh descript like gameplay in the in the description of the video but this is a computer is good to go